What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of my new career mode. This is episode number 12 and we start today's episode off by looking at the media articles here regarding the players that we sold in the last episode on the same day. We sold three players uh, to West Ham and Atalanta respectively. Atalanta brought Amari and also Giuseppe Vives or Vives for a combined total of £1.95 million and also West Ham brought our right back for £9.5 million and to be honest I'm, I'm okay with that although it has actually left our squad a little bit thin on the ground as you'll see we don't really have too many players left in our squad now do we but uh, even so with uh, West Ham buying uh, buying Bruno Perez for 9.5 million pounds I was a little bit frustrated at first but I still believe we can get a replacement in relatively easily or just play Damian at right back as he can play there and uh, as for Amari and Vives where well, they had no long-term future at the club so I'm okay with that we've replaced Amari with a player we already had in our team anyway he was just on loan at Tigre uh, Lorondo an Argentine striker six foot three 71 overall uh, 26 years old he's going to be recalled that will cost us a couple hundred grand but I'm okay with that just a simple replacement for Amari there and uh, there you go so I'm okay with that uh, piece of business Amari's been replaced pretty easily and uh, also as for Perez and uh, Giuseppe Vives well Vives was a squad player we'll still look for a replacement anyway as a sort of uh, a young midfielder to come through but even so as for Bruno Perez as I mentioned before we got Damian who can play right back and we can just as well look for a new right back for hopefully a similar sort of uh, fee as you can see I'm looking for Montoya Jimenez as well uh, Ruben Neves that young midfielder I was thinking about there from Porto we could probably replace them you know we could probably replace those two players Vives and uh, Bruno Perez pretty simply but uh, as for the right backs we were looking for just in case we did want to uh, not play Damian at right back and look for a, a, a complete replacement for Bruno Perez I put in a bit of uh, 6.5 million pounds for Danilo to port, uh, Porto right back and we'll wait and see what they say and also we had a transfer offer for Delhi as well as I mentioned before this guy's going to get loads and loads of bid in the channel transfer window but I don't believe anyone's going to match the 10 million pounds we're asking for so he'll most likely stay at the club. Uh, the reason I do counter offers by the way and not just completely reject them is because sometimes a club will surprise you and match the counter offer so it's just worth doing anyway just in case. But uh, Shalanoglu is a player I would love to sign. Now I'm sure you guys know about this guy. He's a Turkish playmaker who is a, a bit of a free kick specialist. He currently plays for Bayer Leverkusen used to play for Hamburg and he is an awesome, awesome young player. Only 20 years old, 78 overall. Would love to get him in the side but I can't see Leverkusen letting us take him. And also Valentino Lazaro uh, the right midfielder playing for Salzburg right now. Pretty decent young player, only 18 years old. They want £1.8 million for the guy. We'll sell you rate under grand and we'll wait and see what, he, what, what they say because he is just one of those players like Florenzi that seems like he could play pretty much everywhere, you know, all across the midfield. Probably do a solid job at the fullback position as well. He has got right back listed as a position and we'll wait and see what Red Bull Salzburg say. And we take on Roma for the first and only game of today's episode here in the TIM Cup. Now, we beat Medina in the round of 16 stage. So coming to this quarterfinal tie away at the Stadio Olimpico, I was thinking, should we play some first team players or stick faith with a backup team? Well, I decided to stick faith with a backup team because, quite frankly, even though having a good cup run could be fun with Torino, our main objective is in the league. It's our sole objective, really, qualifying for the Champions League. So I don't want to risk injuring or fatiguing any of our first team players in this game. And I did decide to rest all of 11 players. The first chance did fall to Roma unsurprisingly. Jovino's header went just wide of the post and behind for a goal kick but in the 13th minute Gonzalez on loan from Lazio almost scored an absolute screamer from this free kick but the Sanctis managed to tip the ball over the bar and keep it at 0-0. So still goalers. Another good chance for us though in the 15th minute here is Gonzalez is on the ball again for us. Takes it around De Rossi and plays that wide towards Silva. Silva plays it through towards Bernadeschi down the right hand side. Takes it around Ashley Cole with a couple of ball rolls. Gets inside drills in across and Martinez almost scores the goal of the season there with a lovely little back heel or side heel if you will flicks it towards goal anyway but De Sanctis makes the save and keeps it nil nil another great chance in the 25th minute Lorondo making his debut since being recalled from loan goes down the left hand side hits the uh, top of the bar and it goes behind for a goal kick though and uh, still uh, nil nil in this game so Lorondo almost opened his account there but a shot did just clip the top of the bar and it went behind for a goal kick De Sanctis then made another good save from this free kick this time denying Sanchez Mino it was still nil nil but in the first half other than Jovino's attempt we were looking really strong which was quite a surprise for a backup side playing away from home. However, nine minutes after the restart, Roma would get themselves in front in the game. Dumbia found Nain Golan and the Belgian midfielder picked out the back of the net and made it 1-0. Our goalkeeper and also captain for the game was not to be blamed for this goal though. It was an absolutely superb strike by Nain Golan. Sometimes I will point the finger at the goalkeeper if they're getting beat from just outside the area but this one from Nain Golan, what a strike that is. Right into the side of the net. I think he was actually inside the area. Yes, he was just inside the area but what a strike that is. Absolutely brilliant finish with the left foot there into the 
side of the net and it's Roma 1 at Torino 0. So Roma take the lead in this game. In the 64th minute, a good chance for us to equalise as Martinez comes through here, takes it round his man with the drag back and shoots, but the shot goes just wide of the post and behind for a goal kick. And it was sadly how the game would finish as well. Roma 1, Torino 0, and we are out of the TIM Cup in the quarterfinal stage. So a little bit disappointed about that because we did actually play pretty well in the game. As you'll see by the match stats, we did match Roma pretty much every single step of the way. Apparently they had zero shots on target. Not really sure how that one works out. But even so, the Sanctus was my man in the match. He got an 8.2 and he thwarted us at every single attempt. But we're out, of, we're out of cup and that's okay with me because the board only wanted us to reach the quarterfinals. We did that. This was the quarterfinal stage and I'm not too fussed. It was a backup team. We expected to lose. Yes, we put in a good shift and I thought we could have at least took the game a little bit further. But even so, we'll we'll just say, you know, we got to the quarterfinals. We did the objective and that's the most important thing. Uh, still following out more rejects of the players we were looking for. Ruben Neves, Chalanoglu as well. And also uh, Padelli isn't going to get his counter off a match. And also as well, this time I just sort of got fed up with it and rejected the bid for a Mines for uh, Padelli. And uh, Barcelona rejected the bid for Martin Montoya. I don't think we're going to get hold of him. And also Danilo. Porto wanted £9.5 million. Pounds. And I was thinking, that's actually not too bad. Because I've had Danilo before as a right back back in FIFA 14. And he was really, really solid. He's only 23 years old. I don't have his overall. But I'm pretty sure he starts off as a goal player in Ottoman teams. That means he's got to be at least 75 plus. I wouldn't be surprised if he's like 77, 78 overall. So I put in a bit of 8 million pounds. We'll wait and see what Porto say. And uh, as you'll see in just a moment's time, they do actually come back to us and say that's okay, which is a real surprise. But even so, uh, Balanta is going nowhere as well. Leicester wants to take our sense back for 2.2 million pounds. And I was like, seriously, Nigel Pearson? I know he's not growing, but he's still been a really decent centre back for us. That is a bit of an insult, really, considering that we uh, spent 7 million pounds for the guy in the summer transfer window. And also a Lazaro as well. Red Bull Salzburg said they'd accept an offer from another team for £1.6 million. So I decided to match that and we'll wait and see what they say because he's a very decent young prospect, only 18 years old, and he's only on two grand a week as well. So I wouldn't really mind paying that for a squad player, even if I've got to pay a £1.6 million premium for the guy up front. Regardless, it was then time for transfer deadline day. So deadline day arrives here. The January transfer deadline day is now upon us and we still have a few million pounds to work with. And as you can see, Porto did indeed accept the £8 million bid for Danilo, as did Salzburg accept the one. 1.6 million pound deal for Valentino Lazaro. So we go ahead and offered them both contracts. And with Danilo, I was thinking this could be a really, really good move because we sold Bruno Perez for 9.5 million pounds to West Ham. If we can get Danilo for 8 million pounds, I'm pretty sure he'll be a similar overall and he's a year younger as well. I would take that every single day of the week. As you can see, we offer a contract to Lazaro as well. And following that, they did both accept their contracts. So the Brazilian right back and also the Austrian right midfielder that can just play everywhere uh, do accept their contract here and they're ready to be signed. So Danilo comes in for eight million pounds. 70 grand a week is a little steep, I know, but I'm not too fussed paying that. And also as well, you can see Lazaro as well. We do accept this deal. I was thinking, do I want to do this? You know, at first I was thinking, do I want to do this? 1.6 million pounds for a player I'm not really too sure on, but even so, I've seen him do well in career mode before, so we go ahead and accept the deal. He's only going to cost a few grand on a week, uh, weekly wages, and that's okay with me. And as you can see, this is Lazaro, 67 overall, 18 years old. Very decent stats, and as I said before, he could really play anywhere. He's a pretty decent versatile player and as for Danilo as well 79 overall 23 years old and it's safe to say I feel like I've done some really good business there sold Bruno Perez for uh, 9.5 million pounds bringing Danilo for 8 million pounds he's two overalls higher he's one year younger I think we've done some good business there but uh, the deals still weren't done despite those two signings we have some pre-contracts to think about I asked you guys on Twitter for some pre-contract suggestions and I got an absolute ton of responses like so many so thank you to everyone for all the responses I got, I said, you know, what pre-contract signs should I, be, should I be looking for uh, this season? And you guys gave me loads of responses. Uh, Fabian Scher, who we all know about. Uh, also, this is Korean left back called Hong Chol. Uh, Zardes as well, an American striker too. I didn't get full scout reports on them because sadly I didn't get the time to scout them all before deadline day was upon us. But even so, I put in bids for these players and we'll wait and see what they say because with Torino, we don't have, you know, the, the most, uh, you know, we don't really feel like we're going to have too much money to work with next season like an absolutely astronomical amount so if we can sign some players on pre-contracts I think that's probably the best way to go with this Torino side I know some people don't like pre-contracts and that's totally fine but for me I think that's one of the best ways to really develop your squad over an extensive period of time start off in the early season buying pre-contracts then looking to sell on players as well and just keep on reinvesting in those pre-contract players for free just paying their wages I think that's a really good way to improve your squad year by year if you can wait the six months of not having that player in your squad until the new season so so... 
as you can see, we offer some pre-contracts to some players. Uh, Fabian Cher accepted his pre-contract. Now, we know all about this guy. I've had him before in my FIFA 14 career, but he was a really good player for Spurs, and uh, he, he could hopefully do a good job here for Torino as well. Hong Chol, who I don't really know too much about, a Korean fullback. We offer him a new contract, and we'll wait and see what he says. The big benefit about this guy is he's only going to cost us three grand a week, and I will be totally fine with that. And also for Zardes, he didn't want to take a pay cut because players don't tend to pay, uh, take pay cuts in this year's FIFA, which I guess is understandable, I guess. But so we offer a new one at 20 grand a week and we'll wait and see what the American striker says and also following that we see that Hong Cho did come back to us and say that he would accept this contract this time around but Zardes once again declined his contract for a third time uh, sorry second time even and also we had a new bid for Padelli and again I don't see final matching the 10 million pounds and there you go as you'll see though uh, Hong Cho did accept his pre-contract which is great Zardes declined his and we also managed to sell uh, Barreto to Sasena for 850 grand because he's another one of those players in our squad that we don't really need doesn't play too many minutes he He's uh, 29 years old now. He's already decreasing in stats before he's even hit 30, and I'm okay with him going. And there you go. But uh, yeah, Cho accepts his contract. He's only going to cost us three grand a week. He's 24 years old, so I'm okay with that. Don't really know too much about him, but we'll have to wait and see next season what he's like. He's got a lot of stamina, though, which I like, and he looks like a player who could be a pretty decent squad player who won't complain too, uh, complain too many times. We offer Zardes a new contract as well and wait and see what he says. And also, he looked at this guy getting, on, uh, getting in on loan, Maxwell Cornet of Lyon, 18 years old. I I just look down a loan list of the top leagues in Europe, you know, Ligue 1, uh, Bundesliga, BPL as well. Look for some players I could possibly loan in just in case we, have an, we ever have an injury crisis and uh, we we'll wait and see what he says. And uh, also as well, final said no to the deal for Padelli and Leon accepted that loan deal for Cornet and also Zardes accepted his pre-contract, which is great. So all those players come in on deadline day. We sign five players on deadline day. Absolutely extraordinary. We get Fabian Cher, Hong Cho and Zardes on a pre-contract. We also signed Danilo and Lazaro to permanent deal in this January transfer window and it's technically six if you want to count Cornet coming in on loan as well and there you go here's Cornet's stats uh, 66 overall 18 years old decent as a squad player and it only costs us four grand a week so signing five players to the club permanently on deadline day really really pleased with that as another transfer comes in for the Delhi here and we just flat out reject it and there you go so yeah I mean you know selling Bruno Perez was a little bit of a shame because I really did like the guys are right back as you guys know but to be honest I'm pretty pleased with the business we did I mean seriously Danilo coming in for 1.5 million pound cheaper being two overalls higher and a year younger as well he probably has more potential too uh views on amari going and then replacing them with um Lerondo getting recalled from a loan spell and also looking to sign squad players not to mention Lazaro a really decent youngster coming in I'm pretty pleased with what we did in the January transfer window even though it was a bit of a surprise to see Perez leave when I said I didn't want to sell too many players I'm still pretty pleased with what we've done and as you can see uh, I think we did okay with the business there with the brief overview but what do you guys think was this a good or bad transfer window for Torino let me know in the comments because I'm definitely interested in your suggestions uh, sorry your opinions because this was a really really surprising one so I didn't really think too much was going to happen but what do you guys think did I do some good business in this transfer window or is these is this uh, this transfer window going to come back to haunt us on the end of the season and we're going to regret selling Bruno Perez and also Amari and Vives as well but that does end the episode though guys so as always big thank you for watching the video really hope you have enjoyed it if you enjoyed the episode then please do leave a like and I'll see you for the next episode of my new career mode very soon